people will have opinions on things for you mm -hmm. and yeah. also a lot of the times they are right in some type of way mm -hmm. but you also have to think about what type of risk do i want to take what am i willing to take um like for example when i was still in more of the ee field people were saying yeah. like hey i was working in telecommunications they're saying mm -hmm. a lot of these telecommunications engineers are older they're going to retire soon it's a bright future you know like yeah if you just stay there, it's like a golden future. But I was like, ah, that's great. I kind of want to go more into tech, if you understand. Yeah. So I kind of took that shift there. Yeah. And yeah. a lot of people might be afraid to just take a shift like that. Maybe mm -hmm. like fear of judgment, what other people might think about them, what yeah. their parents might think about them. Mm -hmm. Sometimes people don't want to be seen as a person that's going kind of all over the place. But that's kind of how you build experience. Oh, yeah. So I think that's one thing that's really helped me is the ability to build some agility. Have you enjoyed listening to the Incredible Paul podcast? Are you looking for a way to support it? Or maybe you just want some swag? Check out the Incredible Paul store today. We have shirts, hoodies, sweatshirts, hats, stickers, and so much more. Go to incredipaul.org, I N C R E D I Paul org and click on the store link or go to link in my socials bio and click on the incredible shop looking forward to seeing your incredible look turn this up turn this up your professional development is one of the keys to your career success when you combine your desire to grow with actionable steps your journey to success becomes an incredible reality welcome to the Incredipal Podcast. And now, sharing his expertise, experience, and excellence with the world, here's your host, Paul Faranbi. Hi, I'm Paul Faranbi, and welcome to the Incredipal Podcast, where we learn how to become the most incredible versions of ourselves by learning from each other. Today, I'm super excited to have my friend Chooks with me. He is currently a senior site reliability engineer he also recently started his own business. Chooks, how about you introduce yourself the way you would do it? Hey, um, my name is Chooks Simadu, full name Chuku Dike. Um, I'm a senior site reliability engineer at my fitness pal. So I was a type of software engineer. Been working in the tech industry for like the past, past five years plus, And I recently founded manfulhealth.com, which is a mental health platform for men. That is amazing. So I, I see the shirt. You got you got the swag, the band full health. So that that's a quick plug in for those of you who are listening to the podcast. Go to YouTube. You can't see his awesome shirt. I don't know if you're selling those shirts yet. If you <laughs> if you aren't, you should be. But definitely check out the podcast. It's a lot better than just listening to it. Go to YouTube. I am incredible, Paul. But just getting into it, the man full health. I want to talk about that. So. How did you even come up with, with that name and this business idea? Yeah, yeah. So it was a while ago. Um, mm -hmm. I had a tragedy in my family. My dad got sick. And as the first son, a lot of the responsibilities came on me. Mm -hmm. And navigating through that, um, you know, we had things like therapy and stuff, which helped with, mm -hmm. you know, getting into some of those deep emotions. But a lot of the stuff to just kind of move forward, like the more practical stuff, because life still has to go on. Yeah, like the yeah. problems are just going to disappear because you like dug in and talked about yeah. them. Um, I discovered coaching and I had a couple of coaches and I saw like, wow, coaching really helped me navigate through life, helped me access parts of my mental health and build some skills that I didn't have before. And awesome. I saw actually in the greater like male community, a lot of men actually went through, went to coaching as well. Mm. And then I saw the scarcity of a lot of mental health resources for men and the stigma behind a lot of it. Oh, wow. And yeah, I just started, you know, talking to other men and I started seeing that coaching is like a thing that has helped them. It's actually mm. a popular thing. Um, met a lot of coaches, saw some of the pain points. And I said, hey, this is a good method, but I think it can be established a little bit better. So that led me to make it manful health. I like it. Um, yeah, so, yeah, manful, a lot of people don't know. Um, like, manful actually means to, like, be brave or resolute. Oh, wow. Especially in the time of adversary, so. Mm. That's super cool. And it is bravery, too, when you realize that you don't need, that your mental health is not in the right place, that you seek it out, and you don't try and tough it out. Because I know I've 
too many times I try to tough it out and it just yeah. takes much longer. Exactly. It just takes much longer. So if you can ask for help, go get help. Yes. So that's that's super cool. And so is there a, a specific uh, demographic you're you're targeting i know that you it's it looks like it's mainly for men because as men we're not the easiest people that reach out for help but as i don't know because i know your backgrounds in engineers and more for engineers or more like younger professionals or just more for men in general um it's more for men in general um the coaches that come on here uh, and I think that's the great thing is the diversity in the demographics. Uh, we have yeah. a lot of different coaches that can come on here. So maybe let's say, for example, you're a young black male engineer yeah. that probably comes from a Nigerian background. So it might be a little <laughs> bit different. Yeah. Um, if you were to try to find that in a therapist, you might be able to find one, but most likely it's going to be out of your state. You're in Missouri, yeah. correct? So maybe you'll be able to find like one in Texas or something like that. Yeah. Um, but let's say that same one in texas instead of therapy they do coaching on the side even mm -hmm. though you might not be able to access this therapy services maybe some coaching services might be able to help you there oh yeah uh, so that's like a way to like innovate that atmosphere so different types of men because different types of men go through different types of things and that's part of the stigma is that a lot of men feel like they feel like they're alone yeah and, and they feel like, oh, I just should tough it, toughen this out. Um, I should just figure it out by myself. But mm. getting help is actually helpful. So yeah, oh, that, that's so true. It's, I'm super excited for this that that you're doing this. It, it's it's awesome. So kind of talk me through because I, I know we've known each other for a while. That uh, we've had uh, different things throughout our career. Kind of talk me through how you got to this point for management because I know you did a, a few things before. You've done your what you're currently doing at My Fitness Pal. Are you wondering what's next? Has everything you tried failed? Or maybe you just feel stuck? Then coaching might be right for you. The coaching relationship is a relationship totally centered on you. If you're tired of running on the hamster wheel of life and want to start to see results, reach out to Incredipal for help. So what are you waiting for? Go to incredipal.org slash coaching. I N C R E D I P A U L dot org slash coaching or at I am Incredible on all my socials. Or you can click the link in the bio for your free coaching session. I want to make sure you become the most incredible version of yourself. Yeah, so um, I've always liked trying to create solutions for the greater good, um, usually something with a purpose. Yeah. Um, so, like in in college, I was really big into student clubs and stuff, and I really, I was, I had a few president positions, and I really liked yeah. the idea of like coming in to bring people together for a good common cause. Mm -hmm. um, so I kind of developed that skill set, learned how to be really resourceful, mm -hmm. even in some of my earlier jobs. Just that resourcefulness um, skill yeah. is something that always appealed to me. Yeah. So um, luckily, I've been blessed to work in the tech field for like five plus years with different companies. So I got yeah. to see different types of innovations, see different types of customer bases. And I thought about it. OK, um, why don't I try something on my own um, mm -hmm. on the side while I'm still working? So yeah. um, I've always been into health and wellness, fitness. I used to go to the gym a lot in college. Yeah. It's always been my dream to kind of work for like to be able to fuse my technical skill set and my passion for fitness. Um, yeah. Originally, I did think of like making something of my own in the fitness yeah. realm, but I just couldn't think of anything. I just thought like <laughs> it was too saturated. I'm like, hey, man, it's yeah. probably not the right way. And they say like mm -hmm. the best problem sometimes is not necessarily a passion you have, but a problem you've had. Yeah. And fitness is more like a, a passion I've had. So luckily I got to find my fitness pal and fuse my site reliability engineering experience with my passion for fitness. So that's how I ended up on my fitness pal right that's now, awesome. which is great. I, I love working on it. I've used that app since like, high school college so yeah it, it feels really good now to be on the technical side of stuff so a manful um just really talking to other people and seeing that common theme of like what's the common problem that keeps on coming up and i saw like the men's mental health atmosphere um mm. the stigma is huge yeah um like even the amount of resources is either like you just go to therapy or you suck it up and men kind of feel put in a box like yeah. usually the stigma with therapy which i think therapy is great i think everyone yeah. should go i've went it helped me yeah. out a lot but 
sometimes men want to be able to change their media environment in some type of ways. Um, mm-hmm. Sometimes going to therapy might be from zero to 100. Sometimes they might just need to be able to reach out to someone. Yes. Then from there, go to like a different thing and eventually build up there because I do think yes. therapy should be the goal. Coaching is not a replacement for therapy in my opinion, but coaching can be a tool. So mm-hmm. seeing the common themes, um, I even went out to look for some resources and I realized, wow, these resources are really hard. Um, uh, luckily, I was able to find a good therapist in Seattle that did help, but before him, it took a lot of time. A lot of people oh, didn't wow. get it. A lot of people are like putting different things, trying to put me in a box. Um, oh, wow. And like, even during, with my therapist, he said like, he was telling me to like go to other resources as well, like men's groups, things like that. It took a long time for me to find a, men, find a men's group in oh, wow. Seattle. And at that men's group, I actually remember one of the fellow men there, he said that him and his wife decided to work on themselves. And mm-hmm. he looked for women's groups. Within mm-hmm. a 50 mile radius, or I think, yeah, within like a 50 mile radius, she found 50 plus groups. Women wow. Groups. And it, he had to drive like 40 miles just to find this one men's group. Oh my goodness. Yeah. So a lot of like men's resources are still like kind of, it's kind of hidden. You know what I mean? Yeah. A lot of people don't want to put it. It's kind of hidden. It's kind of exclusive. Um, yeah. And, you know, it needs to be more open. Yeah. You know, because mental health, mental fitness is just as important as your physical fitness, if not more. Yes, so yes. Um, I think after the pandemic, the atmosphere has been changing. Um, mm-hmm. People have been taking it very seriously, all types of people, mm-hmm. especially men. So I saw this opportunity to take the risk at medical health. That's, that's super exciting. Yeah, I think definitely with the, the pandemic, the COVID-19, it caused everyone to kind of pause and reflect on is this what I really want for my life? Is, are things going the right way? And with that, there's a lot of uh, mental health questions that you start to ask because you're not in the busy, busyness of work or just life in general, like normally. Definitely. Yeah, definitely think the COVID-19 pandemic definitely accelerated it. Yeah, I agree. I agree. So uh, as far as with uh, manful health, uh, are there things that you're, you're most excited about? I, I know you, you've done a lot of stuff with, with coaching and with the mental health and with therapy. Uh, is there a, a path in there that you're, you're most excited? Because I know you have a variety of people that you're working with or, yeah, just anything that excites you about that? Yeah, I think um, one of the most exciting things about it, in my opinion, is to just try to see how we can tackle the stigma help tackle that mm-hmm. stigma of men's mental health um just using this platform to be able to break down some of those barriers for men to improve their mental yeah. and emotional wellness um is one of the things i'm excited about that's super exciting i like it I like it well let, let's go back before men for help before like maybe even like high school college side when you're you're going into engineering so why for you why why engineer why did you choose that what was the motivation behind that? Okay, yeah, I'll, I'll be honest. Um, I always loved math and science growing up. Yeah. Uh, to be honest, I didn't think I was going to go to engineering in the beginning. I actually oh. wanted to go to physics. Oh, wow. Uh, okay. So I wanted to go to physics, and it was actually someone in college that sat me down and said, hey, here you want to go into physics. Uh, and he just kind of sat me down and said, are you willing to like go all the way through grad school right now? Oh. And probably yeah. get paid just an okay salary and be in a lab all day and mm-hmm. i was like what are you talking about like can i just get my bachelor's in physics and just live life it was like no it doesn't work that way <laughs> like you really got to commit and i was yeah. like oh okay um never mind <laughs> and then he was like how about you try some kind of engineering and mm-hmm. i was like all right okay sure i never really looked into engineering like that yeah. um was still kind of didn't know exactly what I, which kind of engineering mm-hmm. i wanted to do so i kind of chose like a engineering discipline that kind of touched all parts so electrical engineering kind of touches all breaths of engineering in my opinion from yeah. all the way from like to the coding to the chemistry to the mechanical yeah. side is very applicable in all types of things so yeah. i chose that 
That's all. Yo, I I agree. Electrical engineering, it's it's in everything, everything, in everything. especially with all, all the automation. Everything is has electrical components to it that people don't necessarily realize. So that that's so true. And but that that's like for me, I don't know much about electrical side because I did the chemical side. But I feel like between those two people, like they hear electrical and they hear chemical and they'll be like, "You must be really smart." I'm like, um. <laughs> Maybe, maybe, maybe. Yeah, maybe, maybe not. <laughs> we're all winging it, man. <laughs> yeah. It's like, we just, we just chose it because it, it, it touches a lot of different areas. Because the chemical, you can move more to you move the food side. You can go to, like, the medical side. You can go into, like, continuous improvement like I've been doing. So it, it's definitely interesting. So talking more about like this engineering in, in general, what what sort of uh, resources did you you have or because I know you you talked about some of the stuff you were doing as far as leadership positions that you held while you're in college. So what sort of organizations were you a part of and how did that kind of either support your engineering growth or kind of your overall growth? Yeah, um, I would say. Uh, one thing, one of the resource, one of the leadership positions I had was with the African Student Association at mm -hmm. Iowa State. I was the president of that. I think the thing about that that helped me is that I got to talk to different kinds of people um, mm -hmm. within the ASA organization as well as yeah. outside, like with the greater international student body. Yeah. So that really helped me just really, one of the benefits I got from Iowa State is just the diversity that we had there. Get, being able to talk to different kinds of people and um, see different types of perspectives kind of helps change your thinking in a more positive way. Um, yeah. Two, I was part of clubs and I took like different classes, like the Critical Thinkers organization at Iowa State. Um, so that was actually born out of a class that we had in electrical engineering where it was like, uh, it was like four credits. So it was equivalent of like a lab class. Yeah. But it didn't count towards your GPA. So meaning if you got an A in it, it didn't count towards your GPA. Oh. And it was just like, but if you failed it, it would count towards your GPA. Yeah. <laughs> um, so um, I we actually had a course there. It was taught by Dr. Manny Mina. I really love that oh, professor. Yeah. I feel like he challenged us in different ways as engineers. And the basis of that course was to choose a topic, choose a type of experiment you want to do, and they would support it from start to be from start to end. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, so that was pretty cool. Just like looking at like, Hey, we're not just giving an equation and we have to like solve something or looking at the theory is more like, Hey, mm -hmm. you have to build something. So that was very interesting because I saw like the engineering aspect is just more than just the science and the math. It was more of oh, like yeah. the budget, how feasible oh. is this? What has been done already? And taking that as a freshman really opened my eye and I was like, okay, there's more out here. Um, so that was also a very great resource. Um, oh, yeah. I, I, another thing I'll say that helped me really explore my engineering career is in Iowa State, just to be the ability to just try things. Um, mm. I think that's a big advantage a lot of people don't talk about. Um, I know a lot of people say like these 18 year old college kids should just be very rigid and focused on one thing and go through it. But mm. throughout my E career, if you would have asked me that I would have been in tech in the beginning, I would have been like, oh, what's that? No, most likely not. I thought I was yeah. going to be like, more on the power engineering side. Mm -hmm. And there was also a time where I wanted to possibly go the biomedical engineering route and maybe like, oh, I was like, oh, maybe I can like go towards the medical industry after this. Maybe even like get, go to like a graduate degree, get like, go to like yeah. medical school or something. Maybe I can now mm -hmm. combine this with like the fitness thing and oh, work yeah, somewhere yeah. in sports medicine. And I was like, no. Um, then I saw like maybe robotics and it wasn't till like, Honestly, an internship I had where one of the senior engineers there told me about like, hey, you should get into like automation, IT, software, oh, yeah. um, leave some of this physics stuff behind, look at like the IT, look at the tech side, the tech is the future, tech is the future. I was like, what are you talking about? And he's like a senior engineer at the company I was interning at for the yeah. summer. And then I started looking at it and I was like, okay, some of these skills I do have already and mm -hmm. I actually was able to get a tech position at the company I entered the late when I graduated. So that was pretty cool. Nice. So it was by chance, I can't say that I came in my freshman year of college saying, I'm going to work in tech. I'm going to be a software engineer. <laughs> it was just exploring my curiosity that helped. Uh, that's really good. And I, I know I, I talk with Susan. I know you do as well, but it's important to keep those options open 
because they're, and I think all of us go through this who are coming into college because we're told that, and even when we get into career, we're like, what, what's your plan when you're going to graduate? What's your five or 10 year plan? But I've definitely been learning the last two years that you cannot really predict next year, not to talk about the next five years. So it's just yeah. really, yeah, it's just really important to, as you see things that you like, you can try and test them out, whether in, in small ways, if it's just like joining an organization or doing some research on, on it, or like you were talking about with your internship experience, you, you went into something and you start having a conversation and that that senior engineer told you about this, but and you took it to heart. There's one thing to uh, to hear it. There's another thing to actually consider it. Yeah, that's a big thing. Being open minded in that sense. Um, mm -hmm. You don't have to take you don't have to do everything that's told to you, yeah. uh, to you but just kind of gain that discerning air. Right. Mm -hmm. um, if someone tells you something, look at the facts, um, yeah. look at the world around you. Mm -hmm. um, kind of look outside yourself because we tend to yeah. try to look inside ourselves like no I have this I have these good grades yeah. I have these accolades but look outside yourself um, yeah. kind of be humble because the, the world is always moving it doesn't revolve around you and you'll be actually surprised at what you can learn and the insights you can get from doing that um, yeah. you, you like tell if someone would have told some engineers like two years ago like yo AI is really big this is what we're seeing in the <laughs> like the research and people are like oh no but now yeah. we see like with chat gpt generated oh, ai yeah. i know a lot of people in tech now are really scared they're like oh i should be learning this i should be doing this <laughs> um but that's stuff that you know if you would have like been open like open-minded yes. you know you would have learned so just gaining that discerning air is like a really big thing being humble and having a discerning air can really help you in your career in my opinion yeah I agree humility is is so huge and I, I always say that humility is not thinking less of yourself it's just thinking of yourself less so yes. taking yeah take the time to consider what other people are thinking or saying and doing and I have the, the perfect example even with this podcast so you can see this logo kind of it's a little bit faded out here with the microphone and the whole idea for my Incredible stuff was to do speaking was the microphone. I didn't have the podcast until the beginning of, of 2022. That's when I started. Oh, okay. Yeah. And so there's people that told me even a few months after I launched it in 2020, they're like, oh, do you have a podcast? And the first time I was like, no, I, I just do speaking. What are you talking about? And then it was, I think it was probably down to the third time where I was, because I was just focused on going through the motions, coning in my speaking and learning the coaching process, all of that stuff, that I started to learn more about podcasting. I was like, wait, it's like I can start a podcast and the logo already fits for it. It's like, yes. it was already made for it. It just took me a second because I was, I was trying to focus on one thing and get good at it before I kind of transitioned into something else. Nice. Yeah, the growth. Yeah, growth for sure. So, so with that, uh, just talking about growth and learning and humility, what is your your process for growth, or how have you been able to grow through the years, either from different positions or even starting a business, or yeah, the stuff like that? Oh, that's a good one. Um, I think agility, learning how to build agility. Um, mm -hmm. People will have opinions on things for you mm -hmm. and yeah. also a lot of the times they are right in some type of way mm -hmm. but you also have to think about what type of risk do I want to take what am I willing to take um like for example when I was still in more of the EE field people were saying yeah. like hey I was working in telecommunications they're saying mm -hmm. a lot of these telecommunication engineers are older they're going to retire soon it's a bright future you know like yeah if you just stay there, it's like a golden future. But I was like, ah, oh, that's great. I kind of want to go more into tech, if you understand. Yeah. So I kind of took that shift there. Yeah. And yeah. a lot of people might be afraid to just take a shift like that. Maybe mm -hmm. like fear of judgment, what other people might think about them, what yeah. their parents might think about them. Mm -hmm. Sometimes people don't want to be seen as a person that's going kind of all over the place. But that's kind of how you build experience. 
Oh, yeah. So I think that's one thing that's really helped me is the ability to build some agility. So that That's really good. And I, I know between the two of us, I think we probably have had like seven or eight different, <laughs> or seven or eight different companies. Yeah, yeah. So, well, and we, we always talk about that. We have had our fair share of agility and learning new things. And the funny thing is that people think that you have to stay out of like once you commit you well maybe not people don't think that as much but for the longest time you thought you go to a job and then you're there until you, until you retire and then even if you want to leave your job you're like people feel bad for doing that but you have to at, at the end of the day you have to put yourself first not in a selfish way but just more so your you the people around you your family what you're trying to accomplish and keep that front of mind so that you because it's really easy to get caught up in your day to day and not because what like you were mentioning that you were in the telecom telecommunications field, but you already were thinking that no, you want to go into tech, it would have been really easy for you to just well, I can wait around these people are going to be retired, I could just stay with something I know and keep doing it, but you made that jump. Exactly. Yeah, because at the end of the day, no job is going to teach you everything. Yeah. <laughs> and it's not their job to teach you everything. Your career should be in your own hands. And I think that's what people have to realize. Yes. Your career is in your own hands. You have to be able to see what type of risk you're willing to take, what type of risk you're not willing to take. And you have mm -hmm. to be okay with it because it's not easy because some risk might not work out as well. <laughs> 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 like, um, like site reliability engineering, which is the field of engineering I'm at, is a, mm -hmm. basically a software engineering approach to tackle IT operations. And as wow. um, more internet companies, software companies grow bigger and bigger, reliability is a huge thing. Like mm -hmm. people, customers want to have a smooth experience. No one wants to like be watching their YouTube and having it pause up and stuff uh, like that. So there's a yeah. lot of there's a lot of complex engineering behind that. And yeah. I actually had a friend that was a site reliability engineer at Google. And she told me during my first job, I think you should look into SRE, site reliability engineer. Oh, like, wow. You, sh you should look into it. I think you match a lot of these skills, your curiosity, yeah. automation, monitoring things. And I was like, what is this field? I've never heard of this before. <laughs> and in the industry, there weren't that many people that were doing it at the time. Mm -hmm. There was only like a few, like you had like the Facebook, the Googles, LinkedIn, Netflix, and probably like three, like five other big companies and maybe some smaller companies. It wasn't yeah. a standard yeah. like it is today. Yeah. Like today it's like a standard, like everyone has to have an SRE oh, in their okay. aura. Okay. So when my friend told me that I, like I said, I have a certain air, I looked into it. Mm -hmm. I did my due diligence, reading up on it. I mm -hmm. saw the rate that it was growing. Um, I was reading articles. I was seeing people transition into it, seeing yeah. the skills they were building. And I was like, oh, wow, like I should probably... I actually like this. I should probably start moving in that direction right now. Yeah. And by the time I did it, I gained like some of the skills like I learned. I tightened up my Python programming skills, learned like Linux, automation, different IT skills, stuff like that. Yeah. And when I got in at the time, um, I luckily was able to get like some companies before that to help. I gained like a new skill set with each company yeah. by the time I became a full-on SRE at a huge company like LinkedIn yeah. um, on the careers platform at the time at the pandemic. If yeah. I would have delayed that, unless I would have tried to get into that now without taking those necessary steps over the years, it would have been really hard, you know? Uh -oh. yeah. So it's, it's, it's a big risk, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Regardless, you know? Yeah. And even within it, you're not going to always learn the same things. You're not always going to have like that one job is not going to give you everything. Like some, yeah. some companies use in house tooling, which is tools that they built yeah. and use only uh, internally. The company. And then there's something called open source, which is like yeah. industry standards. And mm -hmm. you still have to learn those. So it's like a continuous okay. learning process. You're yeah. going to learn some stuff. You're not going to learn some stuff. So you got to see like what you want to do in your career, how you want to manage your life and be okay with taking some wins and losses. So, yeah. Uh, that's so true. I, I like that you mentioned that being okay with taking the wins and losses because there's been 
the times in my career, there's there'd been a direction I wanted to go, but I was like, okay, in order to get here, I, to get into this, I have to maybe make like a kind of a lateral move or move into something that actually gets me into this company. This company is really good at this and I can move it from there. But Definitely. I think that's really, it's really key. Definitely. Yeah. Being, that's why I think humility is a part of that. Yeah, that, that's so true. So kind of talk through um, your approach to your career as far as kind of the, the conversations you have when you're either interviewing or maybe when you even just start a job as far as um, are they pretty clear on like what where your north star is and where you're trying to go or is that more so internal for you and you kind of try and find the right people in the organization i i think um you kind of have to keep that north star internal for you because like i say your career is in your own hands um, yeah like i don't think it's a company's job to give you everything that you want um that's kind of a lot of pressure on the company as well like it's yeah. not your boss's job to say hey i'm going to give you all of these skills mm -hmm. i do think um discerning and f being really honest like when you're going through the interview stage like what do you want from this job like mm -hmm. do you want to gain certain skills do you want like certain benefits do you want money you have to really be honest with that like i said yeah. be ready to take some wins and losses like for mm -hmm. me for example a big important thing to me um a non-monetary like thing I look for in a company is like mentorship culture mm. um mentorship culture because I'm someone that I might not get something on the first try I kind of like like to take a look at it and really look at that holistic like what does this thing really do that I'm doing yeah. which might take some time there versus someone that maybe they can just see something right away and they just put it in their head they memorize it and they can move forward some people are really good yeah. at that um not me exactly I like to look at something yeah <laughs> And I, I learned from that. I like to like know what's the purpose between that. Mm -hmm. that. That's like, it's an advantage and a disadvantage sometimes, but like learning how to move through that. So mentorship culture is just being able to say like, can I ask questions at this place um, mm -hmm. without being judged? Like how how many times can I ask questions? What, yeah. has, what has the company done to provide a good training experience? You know, mm -hmm. it's like mentorship in the culture, there's training in the culture, our documentation is updated. Am I going to be running around the place trying to figure out things? Like, yes. is it like a seamless experience? Or will I have to do some readings after work? Stuff like that is very important to me. Um, one of my favorite job positions that I've had, I was a DevOps engineer, like Linux systems like that, a company called ProQuest, which is an education technology company. And yeah. I was put in um, on a team of just all senior engineers um, oh, working wow. on their platform. And their mentorship was very a class in my opinion they led me through the systems i got to ask questions i got to take risks i got to make mistakes i got to learn from those mistakes in a very natural way mm -hmm. and actually is one of the jobs that has helped boost my resume the most because the skills that i've gained wow. at that position through that mentorship culture have carried over that's, so that's, that's like cool. one thing for me so i think people have to like really ask themselves the, the question and see what they're trying to balance um yeah it's hard balance is hard mm -hmm. it's very hard like you have to ask yourself like oh do i want this much money versus x amount of money versus mm -hmm. maybe this benefit do i, do I care about this benefit mm -hmm. as so like do i care about like the company name if i say the company to my friends would they know what it is <laughs> or i don't really care what my friends think you have yeah to really the heart, um and be honest with yourself Yes, that that's a huge thing. And that all goes back to humility, like the, the company name. I know, like, I, I'll be honest, and I fell into that when early on when I, when I was working as far as work, one of working for the, the biggest or the most known companies, whether I've been primarily on the food side. So like the General Mills and Nestle's, like you, you say those names, people know what they are. And then the other smaller companies, I'm like, well, I'm not going to reach out to them because I have no idea. Like, if I say this name, no one's going to know who I'm even talking about. And it's funny because right now, the company I'm working for, I did not even know they existed <laughs> up until like maybe, like actually when I applied to it, I was just like, it was within the space I was I was looking at, I was between either staying on the process engineering route or going and continuous improvement. And then they had an opportunity to continue to improve it, manager position. And I was like, okay, like, I know I can do that. And then I started to do research about the company. I was like, wow, 
this company is actually a pretty big company. I just didn't know they existed because they, they do a lot of stuff with other, it's kind of those companies you think of that they work with other manufacturers. So those other larger manufacturers know them, but the normal consumer doesn't know them type thing. So it's just, just that North star and really taking the time to figure out what you want is key. Yeah, it's big. It's, it's, very, it's very key and it's a continuous process because as your life changes, that North star changes. Yes. You know? Like for you right now, you're probably married. So yeah. you know, it's gonna probably change a little bit, you know, and yeah, it did. you know, started your own family. So I think people have to be very mindful about that. Yeah. That, 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 yeah. No, go ahead. Cause, go ahead. Because I think that's where people get stuck is like when it changed, the environment changed, and they still had like the same kind of North Star. Mm -hmm. They're like, wait, okay, this this wasn't the best, <laughs> you know. <laughs> you kind of get in that scary scrap, like, oh. Right, well, you know, this is not it's not sustainable, you know. Yeah, yeah. No, that that's that's so true. That that's exactly where I was gonna go as far as not to be afraid to change that because at one point, it, like in human nature, that we we say we like change, but it's when we like change that we thought of. But when something happens and we have to react to the change, we I don't care who you are, we don't like it at first. But then it's when you go through the process of understanding that change is inevitable, it's going to happen, but taking the, the time to respond to change and thinking about it instead of just reacting, because when, you, when you're in that moment and you're reacting, you're not really, your brain is just turned off. You're not really yeah. thinking about that moment. Yeah, definitely. I agree with that 100%. <laughs> Yeah, that's that's for sure. Well, it's I, I know we, we've talked about like the engineering side, the stuff that you've done with your company, but I know as far as just you as your, yourself, as far as um, nutrition and fitness, you do a lot of stuff in that realm. Uh, you want to talk more about that? How? Yeah, yeah. So like, I'm really big into health and wellness. Um, not as much after this pandemic when I sat at home and packed out some pounds. <laughs> it happened that, to I'm, everyone. It happened to everyone. I'm like, oh gosh, what happened? But uh, besides that, like I've been a lifelong um, health and wellness enthusiast since like mm -hmm. high school. Um, I saw the benefits of health and wellness young because I used to be an overweight kid, like a mm -hmm. morbidly obese kid. That when I like got into sports and just started changing my eating, I remember like freshman year of high school, I went from like 220 something pounds down to like 160 wow and like went from like 160 stayed around 160 bench like 300 pounds having wow. like eight percent of body fat and wow. kind of like stayed around there like into college or so um really love lifting weights love i love cooking um i'm actually even a certified personal trainer i'm a specialist in strength and conditioning wow with with the international sports and science association um so you just do it all <laughs> i just try my best like <laughs> just explore just explore my passion so um i don't practice in it obviously but <laughs> i like <laughs> i i have the knowledge like i know yeah. of creating programs creating nutrition plans things like that and i have the blessing to be able to be an engineer at the biggest like fitness and fitness app like in the yeah. world so that's that's pretty cool um that's super awesome. So yeah, health and wellness has always been something I've liked. I like reading articles about it. I like like listening to podcasts about mm -hmm. it, learning different things. Um, it's been one of my passions. Um, not only from the like physical health side, even like mm -hmm. learning more about mental health has always been yeah um, something for me. Just like learning like how we can improve, learning like where we get our behaviors from, mm -hmm. just being curious about that. So that's a big thing for me as well. Yeah. Yeah. Um, some other things I like doing, I love traveling. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah I travel a lot, actually. Um, just came back from Europe like two weeks ago. Oh, wow. Uh, I visited different cities in England, like London. And then I went to Germany. I visited Berlin. So um, wow. I think the traveling aspect for me comes from the history side. I, I love history as well. So being oh. able to like travel to these places and see like, oh, this is where this battle happened or this is yeah. where this person grew up is kind of cool to me. So Nice, nice. So with that history stuff, are you a big fan of museums or more so going to the places? Uh, I do. I love going to museums. Even when I go to places, I visit museums. <laughs> yeah, yeah. 
<laughs> like if, if there's like stuff on site, I would love to go. If there's just a museum for it, I go as well. So like yeah. in Germany, um, in Berlin, I got to go to like a concentration camp. Actually. Oh wow! Yeah, so that was like very interesting. Just seeing that, yeah. Like, seeing, I was like, wow, it was a it was a different type of experience. So yeah, I I, I can bad never. Well, I've been to Germany once for like. Well, half a day when I was in the Netherlands, I like went over. But <laughs> yeah, it was like I might as well. I'm, I'm not gonna be this close. <laughs> so, but no, that's really interesting. As far as like the, the the history side of things, is there any place that you've been to? Maybe a couple places that are the most memorable for you. I say going back to Nigeria is always memorable for me. Yeah. Like when I go to Nigeria. Um, I try to like explore some of the local spas, some of the nature spas, like the yeah. ancient um landmarks, things like that. Yeah. I learned the history, like what what happened here. Um, some stuff is related to the slave trade. Some stuff is like related to oh, like yeah. some of the old spiritualities. Um, learning those stuff is pretty interesting to me. That's awesome. And I don't know if we mentioned it that we're we're both Nigerian. So like yeah. people that have been listening and watching <laughs> us, like even when you said your your name Shukudike, like they probably everyone who was Nigerian, as soon as you said your name, they knew you're Nigerian. But yeah. like as far as everyone else on, on the podcast, I think I don't know. I think there's there's always something about like you when you meet people that are within your culture or, or share your background. I think that was part of the reason that we got connected at Iowa State through like the LEAD program and through like the National Society of Black Engineers that we were both a part of. So I think it's yeah, all, definitely. That's always key, key for sure. But is there anything else that I, I haven't asked you about or you want to talk about as far as it doesn't have to re relate to like either the travel, health or fitness or with your company, anything else that I haven't mentioned that you want to talk about? Um, not that I can think of, right? Yeah, yeah. Just put me on the spot, man. I just yeah, I know. I did. I did put you <laughs> on the spot. It's, it's it's by design. Keep you on your toes. By design. <laughs> yeah, I know. We've been, we've been talking for a little bit, but it's it's been good to to, to reconnect with you because I know we were, we were just talking before that. Feels like we we haven't talked for a while, and I don't think even like the last time we saw each other was probably. We went to Canada together. When I went up oh, to Seattle. When you were in Seattle, oh really? That's <laughs> yeah. that's been a while, man. <laughs> yeah, I think now that I think about, I don't think we we we've been in the same room with each other since then. Since then, yeah. But yeah, it, that was my uh, fun experience. That was the only time I've been to Canada, and I think you've been to Canada a few times, at least in that yeah. Vancouver area. So yeah, I've been to I've been around the British Columbia area a couple of times. Yeah, so. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I guess that's another thing we're talking about, like um, keeping up with friends from college or childhood. Oh, yeah. Right? Yeah, that's 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 a very interesting thing. Um, I feel like I'm going through that phase in life right now where so many old friends that I try to catch up with. Yeah. Right? Like, we all have limited times. We're all working. You know yes. what I mean? Yeah. We're all in different parts of the world. And it's like, yeah, how do you keep up, you know? Yeah. It's, <laughs> so it's being able to, like, create some relations, like some people, like, where we left off is where we are like if we had like a good relation where we were like if like for example you and i probably saw a couple years ago but we left off well we talked yeah. every now and then it's cool yeah. but some yeah. people are like man you haven't seen me in like four years i don't want to talk to you anymore so <laughs> it, it really depends you know <laughs> like yeah being able to like navigate that i think that's also like a hard part of adulthood you know yeah yeah that that that's so true and I think especially for us, because we've traveled around, we've worked at different companies, and I, I think that's just something you you learn. And that might be another reason why people are afraid to leave where they are, because you get accustomed to the people around, you're in a rhythm, and really having that tribe, having that those people around you, and the culture and mentorship that you were talking about is so critical. But what people don't realize is that you can also get that somewhere else and you don't have to leave where you the those people that you were with before i mean you leave them physically but like like i said we haven't i can't even remember when we went to canada it's been at least five years maybe yeah. six years 
and yeah. we have not been in the same room together most of the time not in the same time zone like i know we're in the same time zone now yeah. but we've been able to stay in contact and just uh reconnect every now and then it's been good it's been great yeah exactly so yeah that, that tribe is very important and like the idea of starting over again it scares people yeah it scares, it scares people. people but once you i feel like if you do it earlier and you do it often enough it's not as scary that if you wait like 10 15 years then it's like a huge thing yeah i think a big thing that helped me build that skill was going to college in iowa just coming in the middle of iowa and age and not knowing anyone <laughs> and it was actually funny how that happened because my dad was like you're not going to school in chicago he was like, oh, you're wow. not going to school in Chicago. I was like, why? He was like, you're just going to have too much fun here. I want you to focus. I was like, can I go to like Texas? You know, I want to go to Texas. That's where all the yeah. Nigerians are living. He's like, yeah, yeah, all the Nigerians. Like, he was like, you ain't going to Texas. <laughs> I was like, man, where can I go to school? Dad? I saw like Iowa. And then we went and visited Iowa State. And he was like, oh, it's just like a quiet place. This is nice. It's like five yeah. hours away. Not too yeah. far. Not too close. Yeah. This is good for you. Uh -huh. This is good for you, man. <laughs> I chose it and just being put in the middle of Iowa, like people, like different backgrounds. Like we had like a 33% international student population. Oh, yeah. We had a lot of people who graduated from high school, graduated classes of like 10, 20. <laughs> that was like, I never heard that before, yeah. you know? So <laughs> we had people that came from like bigger, like from New York City, LA. Uh -huh. We had people that came from like the middle of nowhere. So it was yeah. like a big, mixing pot it's like yeah. a lot of diversity people didn't understand so being put there and just being able to navigate i feel like doing that helped me navigate throughout other places in life like in seattle and back in chicago in different areas i travel different countries i travel to it's helped me like build relations and make connections in those places so yeah once you start like just start it sooner than later just build that yeah. muscle and it kind of helps yeah no i definitely agree and i would most people listening to this like if you're not from the midwest you don't even know where iowa is it's just somewhere in the middle of the country uh but you're like how could there be diversity there i think it's just one of those things because i would say is uh, known as engineering school pretty good very good engineering school and i don't know if it still does but at the time where we were going there had the largest engineering career fair in the country like yeah. companies from all over so i think that kind of brought people a lot of international people going into engineering and just a lot of different people coming together and i think it's one thing to have it, people are coming together but i think we were also intentional about joining organizations that allowed us to interact with different people because it'd be really easy to just interact with only people who are just like you or just like you yeah yeah but i think it's also that intentionality of um, seeking out different cultures like for myself I was a part of the Society of Hispanic Professional Engineers not a drop of Hispanic <laughs> blood in me but it's just I, I joined that community and they were they were super receptive and it was a lot of great experiences got learned a lot about the Hispanic culture and just the the nuances between it the diaspora of it because people think of hispanics and like oh you're hispanic you're mexican i'm like no you could be mexican cuban puerto rican and you could be a combination of both of a, a lot of those things and i think when you are intentional about seeking out different things it just opens up your whole world and you can learn a lot more yeah definitely intentionality is a big thing yeah for sure for sure well, we are about out of time, but I want to make sure people can find you and, and get hooked up to your, your website uh, to sign up or learn more information, whether it's on Instagram or LinkedIn website. So just share more about you, your company, how people can get connected. Yeah, so um, you can connect with me on a lot of different ways. Um, you can connect with me on LinkedIn. Um, and my full name, um, I guess you'll put it in there. Um, yeah, I'll put it in the <laughs> Yeah, Chukudike <laughs> Sigmata. Yeah. You can connect with me on there, message me. Um, you can get on my website, Manful Health, um, okay. www.manfulhealth.com. Awesome. You can look there. You can join the wait list if it's something that you're interested in or know someone that might be interested in that. Yeah. Um, 
Instagram is kooks.gram. That's another way you can reach me as well. So yeah. Super exciting getting connected with you, learning more about your business, how you've grown that, and just your overall personal growth. And I'm just looking back at what, when we were both in college, as far as what we were trying to achieve then versus what we're doing now, it's like you can, you can see the growth. And I mean, it's, just, it's been super exciting. And I hope for everyone on the podcast that you've been listening, if you've only been listening, I'm going to remind you again, go to YouTube. You need to be on YouTube, subscribe to YouTube. But thank you for joining us on this on, on this conversation about health and wellness, making sure that you are being in, intentional about your career, about what you want, but also being open about other things because you never know what you can come across that can make you more incredible than you ever dreamed of. So keep being incredible. Thank you for listening to the Incredible Paul podcast with Paul Ferranbi. We hope you enjoyed. Be sure to rate and review this podcast on your favorite podcast listening platform. We'll see you here next time. And be incredible. Incredible. incredible.